I'm Ben Napier. And I'm Taylor Keene. And this is the BG Comics Infinity Soundcheck. We're just catching up with you guys uh, for our second Kickstarter campaign for Glurk and Bow number two. That's right. Glurk and Bow 2, The Haunting at Titan Station, is live on Kickstarter right now. We're in the final two weeks of the campaign. We're funded and we're headed towards stretch goals. So we're going to go to print. That's right, yeah. Awesome. Printing is happening. And uh, the stretch goal that we're headed towards, if we can raise $1,200, it'll unlock uh, another set of stickers from Tom Hoskison, the illustrator of the comic. He's our man. Yep, he's the dude. So for our last Kickstarter campaign, we featured interviews from Tom mm -hmm. and Jimmy G. Uh, and we figured this time you might want to learn about us. Yeah, that's right. So here's a, an interview that... Uh, our buddy Jason shot for us. This is uh, Taylor and I talking about the origins of Glurk and Bo. Check it out. Recorded live on location in a dink, dink, dark studio, it's these two cats with Infinity Soundcheck. I'm the weird dude that showed up to ask a bunch of questions that you probably want to know, so we're going to start right now. Mr. Napier, Captain Ben, not of the DS9. My good man, how long have you had that green hair? Oh, I, uh, 17 years this year? No, 17 hands. Down whole hands. years? Down the hands. 17 whole years. And it's been the same color Being the entire bashful, time? Being mom. Damn. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, you know, varying shades. Yeah? Yeah. Do you... Okay, I have to ask this question. Do you have the memorized name and product number? Like, who, like how do you keep the oh, same yeah, shades? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I totally... I'm a control freak. So, yeah. I, oh, absolutely, okay. I absolutely buy the product and, you know... A lot of times I have help from different folks, but is that Party City? Totally, Part, that? yeah, Party City top shelf, top shelf of Party spray City. Spray on, spray on green. So uh... <laughs> <laughs> day glow, baby. Yeah. So uh, do you feel like you're totally known for that? I mean, you you got the studio called Green Audio. I see jokes all over your Facebook feed about it. Are they? Do they get tired? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't listen. I tune it out, you know. Ah, totally, no more haters yeah, for you. Yeah. Uh, totally oblivious. Totally aloof. <laughs> so, I've heard you talk a little bit about being in the art scene here in Fort Worth. I think your words were a Fort Worth kid. M music, uh, music scene, yeah. The music scene. Okay. Well, I, is it wrong to include them together? Aren't you kind of breaking into that now, where you breach into building comic books and music? This and is recording? true. This is true. You're going for the EGOT? I, I want an EGOT. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, Taylor, I really actually, I assumed that you were in the music scene as well. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. I played in a couple bands um, that are now defunct, but um, featured such folks as uh, William Ricard, Adam Sewell, Jordan Bell. They're just local guys. I mean, I played a bunch of shows around, and that's how I know Ben, I think, um, just from, uh, we recorded here at Green Audio a few times um, with a few different bands, I think, and like rehearsed here, mm -hmm. and then just seeing each other around town. Yeah, we wound up backing up uh, our buddy Josiah Hunter yes. together in a uh... For his band is uh, a state of suffering caused by the sudden side of one's own Misery. That's mind. An entire Misery. name. Yeah. yeah. Nice. A very and you shall know us by the trail of the dead. Yes. <laughs> uh, so how long have you two known each other though? Ooh. I don't know exactly. My daughter is gonna be four, so probably six or seven years. Around there. Yeah. Seven, seven eight years maybe. Do you guys, um, regarding this comic book project with uh, Glurk and Bo, do you feel that there's any specific lessons, either from networking or project management or deadlines or anything like that, that you've learned uh, during that time with working with musicians and as musicians? I mean, overlap into making comics? Absolutely, yeah. It's, yeah. All, it's all collaborative art, you know. It's all, it's all team sports. And the the learning how to manage heartbreak of when, <laughs> or the anxiety of, but my idea can't can't, you know, or just I'm not good enough to do the thing, or you know, or the learning how to not compare, I don't know. So you've had so to to maybe paraphrase it sounds like you you guys got the stage fright and the anxiety out of the way now it's just like we're gonna keep doing it. 
and whatever that new project is, you kind of take that with you. Is that right? I guess so. Yeah, I mean, we have continued interest in all those fields, but uh, yeah, in more. Okay. Well, let's uh, let me. I know this is you, this question is usually uh, is going to come across a little bit ahead of the uh, horse ahead of the cart, but before we get into any more nitty gritty. Out of the gate, is there anything that you would suggest to any other Tom, Dick, or Harry that wanted to write a comic book? Like, the big red flags. Would you talk him into it or would you talk him out of it? That's a better question. Uh, I'd say do it for, you know, do it for fun. Don't do it to try and make a buck. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it's, it's a long enough process and it's a deep enough process that if you're if you're not doing it because you're really excited to just do it, you're probably not going to do it. <laughs> like you're probably not going to work through, you know, work through a, a project to completion, much less multiple projects to completion. Uh, but I, and then I would say learn to draw because <laughs> you're going to want to eventually anyway, for one reason or another. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I would second all of that. Uh, that's a hard question. I mean, um, man, I don't have an answer for that. No worries, man. Hang on to that one. We'll we'll come back to it when you're in like book six. Yes. We'll see if that's changed at all. Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe maybe learn to love other people's interpretations of your ideas. <laughs> learn learn the difference between uh, you know vision and megalomania. <laughs> I feel like that may be directed at me. No, that's not. That's no, not I'm a joking. swipe, but anyway. Okay, um, let let's move on to the uh, the gentle low lob comic questions. We're, we're, it seems it seems to me that comic book nerds in general want to give you a run you through the gamut and start asking you a series of questions, and they'll thereby decide whether or not you are worthy of being a comic nerd or oh. one of us, as it were. Oh. So yabba some, yabba. Yeah. Yabba Talk yabba. Yeah. So first, simple and easy. Uh, ben, what was your first comic book? Oh man, it would have been uh, probably one of my dad's Captain America comics. Probably the earliest comics that I remember reading uh, would have been like Captain America comics from when I was a kid in the early '80s. Not early '80s, late '80s. I was not alive <laughs> in the early '80s. Um, Probably stuff around that you know the time of like the U.S. agent and oh, crossbones right being in Captain America all the time. So you're getting ready, dude. Friday, you're gonna get to see some of that that oh, old Falcon school story. Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah. so uh, that yeah. will get represented. I am pretty excited about that. Yeah, my like uh, I definitely read all of the like Jack Kirby Captain America like uh, Captain America and the Falcon stuff. That's about 100% pure Marvel right there. Super into that, yeah. Uh. Okay, so that, that was your first comic, and it, it was Captain America. Um, when did you discover that comic books could tell you stories that didn't involve superheroes? Oh, man, that's 100% uh, Grant Morrison, The yeah. Invisibles. Uh, yeah, I got a, I found a, an, a Vertigo, you know, The Invisibles trade. Uh, number one, I think what's it, it might be called Say You Want a Revolution. Uh, and it definitely blew my mind wide open on that level like i had i had never read anything that wasn't you know either a comic book or like a license or like a movie adaptation or something uh like that wasn't a superhero sorry and so uh that was pretty interesting i was a, i was a teenager and so i was like kind of primed and ready for it i had already read a lot of the eric larson savage dragon which is oh, right. like basically my favorite comic of all time because uh, it's still going and it's still, you know, the same creator. It's not, you know, it's changed voice a lot of times, but only because Eric has. <laughs> um, let me um, let me ask you, Taylor, uh, regarding your first comic book. I don't know if it's accurate to say the following, but uh, as I'm getting to know you here as uh, part of the team, I'm, I'm learning that maybe you're newer to comics than, than say, uh, Ben. I would so. say new-ish. Okay. I. Um, you got the proof. Show I have the, the proof, proof here. I I don't know what the first comic book I ever saw was, but the first I know the first one. I, the first one I remember like really reading was The Sandman, 
And that <laughs> is like they're so weird for a lot of like real comic people. Because it's not, you know. You're, you're, you're the guy that shows up to the Halloween party dressed as the crow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is my Sandman uh, number 41. And I have, of this little run, probably can't really show it here, but anyhow. So that's, I, I got it at the library first off, because I was a library kid. Um, I didn't have, like, <laughs> video games. <laughs> so I read a lot of classics and stuff, and so this kind of writing appealed to me. I was aware, of course, of Batman, and I watched the animated series, um, you know, and I knew, I knew all of the JLA and stuff. I watched Super Friends and stuff like that. But um, I don't know what really stands out to me was, or stood out to me, was the Sandman and um, heavy metal. <laughs> oh right. I was like, uh, you know, preteen. That's what I liked. And those were really the I was happy with those comics. And that was about it. Um, I'll open this one up to both of you. Um, feel free to shoot back in any way you like. But uh, do you have... So uh, talking about comic book nerds and how they like to vet people, right? Um, one of the things I've noticed is... Uh, is here, just here's the question. Who's your favorite creative team, man, aside from... TSK and Ben, who's your oh. favorite creative team on comic books? Um, and and do you even know that stuff? Like I consider myself a fan, but I couldn't pull two names out of a hat and mix them together. Accurately I definitely don't think I'm on that level just yet, for sure. TSK and TH forever, uh, forever. Tom Hoskinson, shout out. That's right. Um, man, there's such there are so many really really great pairings. Um, is it uh, it's uh, Scott Snyder and Capullo? Oh yeah, they have done lots of clutch Batman yeah. stuff together. Yeah. So good. Uh, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips, all the criminal and all that stuff is amazing. Um, man, uh, let's see. Uh, Preacher, hand me the Preacher book. It's Steve. Ennis. It's Steve Dillon, right? It's yeah. It's Garth Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon. All that stuff is is fantastic. Um, man, uh, Eric Larson and Eric Larson is fantastic. I was gonna say Scotty Young and Scotty Young. Yeah, Scotty Young and Scotty Young. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, let's see. Um, uh, Brian K. Vaughn and anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm dodging the question at that point. I'm not giving a, a uh, real, a real all, answer to that question. So good, I guess yeah. I'm, I guess I'm tapped out. Well, let me ask uh, the opposite, the antonym of that question. What about the least favorite creators? Do you have anybody or, uh, that makes your list? I don't, now, I, I feel like this oh, answer man. applies more to big two comic book fans because it's long-lived characters that get kind of changed up a little too often. Well, I I don't want to shit on anybody, so I, I kind of want to dodge the question just for that. <laughs> but okay, I, but well, I, I'm going to take your dodge, and I'm going to say <laughs> F Dan Slott. There we go. Oh, Harsh shots fired. You did some I, uh, good things to spite I was gonna say somebody said that Glurk and Bo, the product, the physical product, was a better product than uh, Future State Shazam. Ooh, and we wow. th and we thought about it was, it was the read the read pile said that. Oh, <laughs> that well, was, they are very sweet. That was a that was a funny nugget. Yeah, he was he was just sort of having a riff on some of the Future State books, and you know, <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of politics and you know shit running downhill and all of that stuff. So. I'm not trying to dump on anybody's work because I know how I hard see. it is to do any work. <laughs> I should have known better. That's like asking you to cr critique other vocalists in the area. Well, I oh. I, I would say nah. I, I would say I'm the guy that's known for giving the the straight dope like to my straight to my detriment. Dope. Like I tell well, I tell everybody way more than they want to hear, <laughs> mu music wise, and so I'm trying to learn from that. I mean that is very <laughs> Captain America. Let's be real. Okay, well, let me ask this question. Um, moving on from the vetting, I, I, I want to know, um, how did you guys land on comic book as a thing that was like, yeah, this will work? <laughs> That's all been. Yeah. It's like, um, it's like uh, you know, the origin of the Hulk, right? It's like the, the Hulk sort of like 
there's there's the, the Hulk. Yeah, it's, it's the Hulk oh. and Rick Jones, right? Like he comes Rick, ah. Rick Jones wanders into the into the the test field, right, where they're doing the gamma ray tests, yeah. and then Bruce has to run out and save him and trying to push push Rick out. He gets the gamma rays, right? And so basically, one of us is the Hulk and one of us is Rick Jones, but. I was going to figure out how to make comic books kind of one way or the other. <laughs> okay, I think and, I'm getting it and, now. And Taylor wound up sort of like getting getting caught in the cyclone. He came over <laughs> and we were, we were hanging out one day, um, enjoying refreshments, and we were talking about a short story that he had written, a sci-fi story called Glurk Meets, an Angel of, Meets the Angel of Death. And he wanted to make a sci-fi zine. He wanted to do like a DIY sci-fi zine. And I had just, you know, was sort of like realizing to myself and actualizing that I wanted to make comic books and that I was going to do it and was doing a lot of research into it and that kind of thing. And I said, why don't we, you know, why don't we, first it was, well, if you do a zine, I want to do a serialized comic in your zine. And then the next week it was, why don't we turn the story into a comic book? Like, that sounds like this story would be an awesome comic book. And so then, you know... Eventually, we started cycling on each other that way, and you know what was going to be a one-shot comic book to see if we can make a comic book on the way to this other monthly kind of high-concept thing that we had. Can we turn this short story that you already wrote into a one, you know a cut-and-dried one-shot and just see how it works? And basically, we sort of like hit that cosmic resonance and. Every every theta waves. Yeah, like every <laughs> every phase of the process, the energy just like fed back, right? And we and we were like, oh man, that was so much cooler than we thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. That now we want more. Right on. You know what I mean? Like by the time we had uh, Tom locked in as an artist, uh, you know, every time he gave us pages, we just wanted more pages and just wanted to see more stuff and and ev- so. What was initially conceived as a 22-page one-shot became a 26-page. 26. Yeah, it became a 26-page uh, first issue of a six-issue, you know, limited series that will, you know, that sort of spins off into so a few other limited series that will that will tie into the monthly book that you know. Who knows if it will ever get made at this Fantastic point? Fantastic foreshadowing. But, yeah, but that was that was the initial idea, right? Was the was the monthly book and and sort of reverse engineering how hard it would actually be to do a monthly book, you know, led us to, you know, to making a one shot, and that and that one shot has uh, you know, has grown legs, twice over, and so now we're sharing it with everyone. That's pretty groovy. It's a fun book. Yeah. I really, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, let's see here. Um, when it came to choosing your artist for this book, mm-hmm. uh, was there a specific style or uh, vibe that you were looking for? Essentially, how did you know that you had found the right guy in Tom? Uh, so we went back and forth a lot about the tone of what Glurkenbo would be, because uh, that was really important. We. We wanted there to be elements of hard sci-fi where it felt real, like it worked, like it wasn't too kooky or space fantasy. Um, But being a Douglas Adams fan and just liking having a comedic element, we kind of let it go a little kooky as well. Like Glurk is an innocent, you know, sort of happy-go-lucky guy. Um, And... You know, Bo is cheerful as well, so I don't know. That's sort of like the there's a little bit of a kooky, um, almost cute element to it. And whenever we saw, we saw a bunch of different styles, but Tom's style specifically uh, worked really well because he just caught on the idea that there would be elements of horror mixed with sort of cute comedy and it I don't know he just sort of nailed it really well I don't maybe it's a chicken and an egg maybe he sort of created the tone as well but I mean it all happened organically that way and he he did a lot of teaching us how to pace layouts um and you know really like laid out the book really and we he and I did a lot of back and forth 
on uh, panels and panel layouts and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And in that, we found the tone. Right on. So speaking of the tone, there was a, a part in the uh, uh, in the book early in the book that I was just really enamored by. I I really like the groovy little space pens that the dudes have, little vape pens that they got. And it seems like there's a <laughs> tiny like terrarium on the inside of this thing. And then in the panels where there's exhalation, there's just like a it's like a nebula of imagery within that cloud of smoke. Is that something you wrote into it, or is that something that Tom brought to the table as part of that cute creative? I don't recall. I, th I would yeah, I would say ah, that okay. the colors is Jimmy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just interpreting um, yep. the space vape pen though is we were having one of our powwow sessions and. Um, we were saying, well, you can't like have flame in right. space, so we had to. We had probably had a three-hour discussion <laughs> on how to solve that problem. Um, you know, it's true. Uh, yeah, no, no joints in space. That was that was across our hard sci-fi line. That was too much cognitive <laughs> dissonance for Tom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, let's see. Um, uh, regarding other possible media situations, um, ha have you guys considered the ever popular four panel comic, web comic uh, format that exists out there? Are you we, familiar with we're that? F we're familiar with that through our, um, yeah. our friend uh, mm, Ryan Random Roberts uh, oh, yes. doing uh, Bone Bag Comics, as we're, we're producing that animated pilot for him. So yeah, that that format works really well for him. That's kind of, kind of like setup and, and punchline situation. Um, you know, that's a really good question and and a sort of really good food for thought. Taylor and I have both just recently become way sold on the idea of um, like sort of getting our hands dirty on the illustration side and doing our own uh, like telling some of our own stories, doing some of our own sequential art, and so. Um, that could be, you know, I could see that totally being a thing that one or the other of us explored in the future. But I don't necessarily, I mean, honestly, Glurk and Bo sort of has the makings of, you know, a pair of char of characters that could be easily, you know, exploited for four panels set up and, and punchline kind of comedy. So that's a, that's a funny thought because we have talked, we have talked before about doing some more episodic Glurk and Bow stuff maybe in the future if, if people really dig the characters that much. Um, ha, so that's cool as hell. I'm looking forward to seeing where you guys go with that one. You don't have to be locked into four <laughs> panels. You can do all kinds of stuff with, uh, with online release there. Um, not to take away from print books. Print books are a special sacred thing and I'm actually Thank you both for for making a brand new book that is out in the world because it's oh that you can hold in your hand yeah exactly it's We're a medium really proud of that part that's for being sure, yeah. you know that's that's been slowly snuffed out since the mid '90s and so mm -hmm. this whole group you guys actually this is I'll cut this out but you guys plugged me into the whole Kickstarter thing where you could actually buy comics mm -hmm. and it's like this. Um, collector niche in my in my brain like it hits that adrenaline thing man i just oh, gotta like yeah, yeah. now i'm looking at other books and other local creators and things like that so you guys opened up a whole world for me and i really appreciate that yeah and it's such a wild platform too and i'm really glad that there's a lot of crossover into the stores because it really is the kind of thing where like prior to kickstarter unless you were just like a total fiend and you were going to cons and things like that you probably were not getting you know sort of like all this like hype media you know like all these like uh you know motion comic trailers and you know narrated you know scored trailers and things yeah. like that for comic books that all these creators are making right now um and that we'll probably eventually make too uh it's really like there wasn't, you know, like the the extent of that promotion for a lot of people was just looking at the new comic wall and like, oh, this looks cool. Like the the cover was was all of that, right? And so now, you know, people are people are getting invested in their own product on that level to try and get it to people. And so it is, you know, it's it's a lot like you know the music industry thing where where it's like the you know the fittest are making sure that they survive you know sort of regardless of what the marketplace at large is doing and so it's um you know 
like it's a great platform. Had you so you had not you had not been introduced to that. You know, so you had mentioned the whole uh, if you're a comic nerd, like a comic convention type nerd. When mm -hmm. I used to uh, manage shops and used to go to conventions, I would see books and tables and vendors, and exactly like you said, it was pretty much the primary way of me getting to that. There was mm -hmm. Facebook groups and things like that. Yeah. But the trend of basically going at it DIY like a rock star is not something I was aware of. Like I, mm -hmm. I knew about our a mutual acquaintance, David Dobb, and how he was putting books out. I knew about Terry yeah. Parr and uh, Halo and stuff like that and how they were moving their works. Um, but I had not really cued into how expansive Kickstarter really is for getting some of the, the great stuff off the ground. Yeah. Um, I'd always thought of it like, uh, you know, that's where you go to get your gadget, your new high powered coffee maker or whatever. I hadn't right. considered the, the creative stuff like comic books. So yeah, yeah, seeing that got, got me, it, it just pointed the eyes right there. Um, yeah, it was kind of news to me too. And it was like, to the extent that like, I didn't, I didn't get hip to Kickstarter first and like, oh, anybody can do this. Anybody right. can do a comic book. Like I, you know, I got way deep into comic books about six years ago on a vacation. It's sort of like the first time since I was a kid that like I had stopped for long enough to, you know, be encountering a physical comic shop and have money to spend and have time to read comics like all. The perfect storm yeah, for that like shop. Exactly. <laughs> the the you know, the trifecta actually happened. And uh, since then, I've just been buying comic books like mad. And, and I had, for about a year, I had kicked around the idea of like, maybe it would be cool to write some comic books. And so I had bought um, Words uh, Words for Pictures by Brian Michael Bendis. Oh, right on. Right, right before the pandemic lockdown took effect. And so it was like, it showed up at my house. And I was like, well, I guess I don't have anything better to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Um, yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been a really really rewarding and, and affirming journey uh, for both of us so far. Just shifting shifting into a new you know creative outlet as the as the world is you know was was kind of falling down you know around the seams. Hey Ben, let's talk about what we've been reading because as we were saying a little bit earlier I'm the baby boy to comics <laughs> and you're the dad and so or the teacher <laughs> let's go with that you you've been the teacher or at least say you know Ben's been so kind bringing me <laughs> books and stuff to read so uh, and I I've, I've been wanting to do a bunch of homework been needing to do homework and read some comics so uh what have we been reading? I'll start with Future State Swamp Thing. I got one and two, uh, written by Rom V. Um, I don't know why I liked the idea of reading Swamp Thing, um, but it's just weird and non-superhero-y, and so and that's the stuff that I like. Um, beautiful, like almost like a creation myth. Uh, I love it. Um, in that vein, uh, went back and doing some more homework, um, reading Alan Moore, Saga of the Swamp Thing, book one, uh, just doing homework, learning, you know. From the best. Yeah. From the, from the boy. From and the I, old it's weird. Like I know about Alan Moore and Morrison and these guys from their more esoteric interests. So it's cool to read like his actual comic. I've read Watchmen and stuff before, but I, I'm loving Swamp Thing. It's again like that creation myth and just ripping apart the hero's story. Joe Campbell, eat your heart out. Uh, and then some more homework: The Dark Knight Returns, Frank Miller, classic. Uh, I want to do a couple shout-outs for indie guys. Stray. By our buddies Eric Gay and Andy Poole. Uh, I've been talking with Eric a little bit, tweeting back and forth, and appreciating each other's work. Stray is a really cool fantasy comic. It is an epistolary, of, uh, which is a letter, a story told from like a letter or a journal, uh, like Dracula. Okay. Uh, sort, of, so, sort of about a dimensional doorway in a cave that leads to a forest called the dream. 
I can't really explain it any more than that. It's a great read. Um, 10 out of 10, would recommend. Uh, find uh, Eric uh, at E. Martin Gay on Twitter. Uh, and he has a pinned tweet to read Stray for free on Google Drive. So do that. Uh, I also found on Reddit, uh, randomly scrolling through there, a indie work from Russia. I think it's called Vitok. And it's a really cool, ambiguous sci-fi story. Um, I messaged the guy, uh, and I wanted, you know, can I share your thing? <laughs> I think he was okay with it. So go and find Vitok by u slash Redkov, R-E-D-K-O-V. I think we're going to show a still from it there. Um, just a really cool black and white hand-drawn, from what I believe, uh, Russian sci-fi comic. It's like dream logic. It doesn't... It's really good. And then I have a bunch of stuff in my read pile. Nameless, uh, Dune House of Atreides books, uh, True Faith, doing some more homework, uh, Star Trek titles, and some old Slow Death stuff that yes. Ben has brought me. Slow Death. What have you been doing? What have I been reading? Um, I've, been, I've been reading this. This Klaus Janssen's DC Guide to Inking Comics. Klaus Janssen is the other half of Frank Miller. Oh. All, the, all the classic uh, Dark Knight Returns and oh, okay. Dare, Daredevil stuff. He's the the inker. Oh, he is on the, that one. Yeah, the inker. Like I think they both ink and pencil in a lot of that stuff. I don't know how their process works. I've heard different things and I haven't like studied explicitly. But I've decided uh, I was. So Fabrice Sapolsky, who's an awesome creator and is a super friendly guy, uh, I was texting him. I got his number from a, an old Omar podcast. Oh, and, <laughs> oh and that's right. It was while we were snowpocalypsed here in Texas, and we were snowed in, and uh, he was a total sweetheart. Uh, it was kind of confusing. I thought he was in Italy, and then he thought I was in Italy, but it turns <laughs> out he's in L.A. now, and I'm always in Texas. So you and, just randomly texted him? Basically, yeah, yeah and, he cool. was, and he was down. But he, nice. we, we spoke a little bit about cons. Taylor and I are babies. We've never been to cons, uh, unless you count when I was like eight years old. And so um, he told me that uh, I should learn to ink, oh. that learning to ink is a lot easier than a lot of people think. And uh, right. so I am uh, super excited to be doing that. And that's oh. why I'm reading this, and I'm also reading more Frank Miller and Klaus Janssen stuff. Um, I'm always reading The Savage Dragon because Eric Larson and Eric Larson is the best artist-writer pairing of all time, <laughs> uh, like we discussed earlier. Uh, I love the fact that uh, the story has gone on so long that it has got a completely different lead in the, in the same lineage now, and uh, I love all the, um, the detours that the story has taken stylistically, creatively, et cetera. I feel like it's a, it's a fantastic thing and it's totally at this point an american institution Great. <laughs> like, like Lucy it is it is the longest running and... it is the longest running comic ever written by written and drawn by the same creator wow like and is you know and it's still going uh i'm also reading rorschach the black label tom king right are you gonna what are you yeah, gonna our, our boy uh, psychiatrist sorry the oh, the rorschach oh rorschach right, right. from the yeah from the watchman oh. uh Super, super cool story. I'm, I'm all in. I don't understand where it's going. It's almost like watching an Oliver Stone movie or something. You're like, oh, this is riveting. I have no idea what's going on, but I'm so in. Um, Deadly Class coming back soon, so I'm about to have to start going back and rereading those. Uh, Rick Remender is another one of my favorites. Definitely one of the people that I yeah. attribute. Uh, my, my embracing of the DIY uh, punk rock comic book aesthetic uh crossover donny cates is like wow. the king of everything right now um this we is, love his silver surfer black stuff too. we do yeah. influential even perhaps yeah. uh but so um yeah this book is a really wild take on, you know, like the cool world who framed Roger Rabbit kind of like fiction and reality, you know, mashup Whoa. kind of situation. But very comic centric, lots of social commentary, very good stuff. 
Uh, I'm also especially into touting this book because every time I think I have an awesome idea for something that happen, should happen in a comic, <laughs> I read it in a Donny Cates comic a week later. <laughs> well, you know, he's an innovator. Right, exactly. All right. Sweet. And there's, yep. Um, so, yeah, that's what we've been reading. We should shout out uh, some local shops. We should shout out everybody that's carrying our product. Uh, so... Big ups to uh, Brent motherfucking Irwin for carrying our book at Collected and giving me a jab while uh, I was unemployed for a while Uh, and uh, just generally sharing some guidance with us on all things comic book creating. He was one of the publishers at Ape uh, Comics and did a lot of stuff and so he knows a lot and he's been sharing a lot and that's been really awesome. Um, they're also carrying the book at both locations, Keller and Fort Worth. Um, they're basically our only DFW comic shop, uh, specifically. You can also find our book at Dreamy Life Records inside of the mass music venue in Fort Worth, uh, that we love very much. Um, you can also find it in Colorado Springs, Colorado at What's Left Records, uh, thanks to Brian Ostro. You can find it in Sacramento, California at Empire's uh, Comics Vault, um, thanks to Ben Schwartz. And you can find it... um, Ooh, don't let me... Is this it? Victorville? Yes, Victorville. Line Breakers Comics, thanks to Dave McKean, uh, who also makes his own comics uh, in California as well. So uh, thanks to all those guys for being indie-friendly comic shops. We're hoping that that list will uh, will grow. And uh, yeah, if you know a comic shop that should have uh, our comic in it, uh, please let us know. And we'd love to we'd love to get it there. Cool. Uh, now I think Taylor's going to shout out some podcasts. Yeah, I, we've been doing a few interviews, and um, there's just a couple guys that I want to shout out. Uh, Constructing Comics podcast has been super yeah. sweet to us. Uh, yeah, Matt yeah. Kund and Noah Cray. Um, they're super cool guys. They do their own comics as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Dino Thrashers. Dino Thrashers. Uh, Matt's working on Paranormal Hitmen. That's the one I was for, thinking for of. For Behemoth right now. Yeah. So And then uh, Dumb Comic Creators as well. Those yeah. guys are real fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you want to uh, talk to us on your podcast... We like to yeah. talk. And Greg, Bearded Comic Bro, the Bearded Comic Bro Bearded Comic Bro. Totally had us yes. not, not too far back, and they're, they're awesome. He was giving us the retweet love on uh, the new Kickstarter. Okay. So I'm going to check the Kickstarter real quick and see where we're at. We... Yeah, one little refresh. Mm, nope, still there. Cool. Five, 533. Well, we're happy, man. Absolutely happy. Yeah. That's the only, this is, when did you put, make this go live? Uh, about 20, when did you about, make it live? It's we're like right at the 24 hour mark right now. Okay, well, hey, I'm happy. Yep, yeah, we're something like 90% funded. Dang, yeah, so we're, we're very, very close, close enough for rock and roll. Well, that was a lot of homework, Ben. Sure enough, you need a bigger dog. <laughs> Thanks again for being here with us at the BG Comics Infinity Soundcheck. Thanks for catching up with Taylor and me and Glurk and Bo and Jimmy and Tom and Matt and Tim and Max. And pretty soon those books will be going to print. That's right. Two weeks left in the Kickstarter campaign. We're headed towards that first stretch goal. And uh, two weeks after the campaign ends, we'll have the money for Kickstarter and all the physical rewards will go to print. Oh, Odie. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And we'll also send out all the digital rewards. Cool. So how can people stay in touch with us uh, otherwise? Or if you want to start a project, how can we collaborate? Uh, Well, you can always find us at bgcomics.com. You can find us on all the socials at uh, at bgcomicbooks. And uh, if you try real hard, you can probably find our our Reddit Reddit (laughs) users on there as well. Fair enough. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for hanging with us, and uh, we hope you get a chance to escape into some art sometime soon. Cheers.